Welcome to The Journey Amplified, where we amplify the journeys of newcomers and immigrants here in New Brunswick, Canada. Our guest today on the show is Samsudin Kazim, popularly known as KSA. He is the founder of KSA Immigrations. He is located in Calgary, Alberta. You're welcome, KSA. Thank you. It's a pleasure joining you. How's the weather today? Oh, oh pretty good. The, the only thing is just like um, spring is not coming. Um, <laughs> we're still experiencing um, a lot of snow in, in Calgary. So hopefully in a few days time, it's going to be better. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for joining us on the show. Um, as we are speaking on the journeys of newcomers and immigrants, we thought that it might be nice to begin with something that resonates with where newcomers are coming from. Um, what got them started into the whole uh, immigration journey? Why Canada? Why New Brunswick? You know, I know that you were pretty pivotal to our immigration journey. Uh, from Nigeria to to Canada, and uh, the question the, the question that comes up to me is why New Brunswick? I know that you have worked with so many other clients, helping them on processing their their immigration here to New Brunswick. First of all, I'd like to know why New Brunswick. How did you get to know about New Brunswick? Our journey started about uh, over five years ago, about seven years ago, and how did you get to know about uh, New Brunswick and why New Brunswick? Oh, okay, thanks a lot for that. You know, one thing is, um, um, if I'm not in Abata today, the other province, the other province I'd like to be would be um, New Brunswick, um, because of the fact that um, I discovered they have a lot of aging population, and there is a need to um, invite new immigrants. So that can help to grow the population of New Brunswick. So um, I think I did my research about New Brunswick in 2016, um, and I discover it's like the, the population is not growing like any other part of um, Canada. And I just said that oh, it's, it's high time we should. Um, focus in to go into this province. So I galvanized some friends in Nigeria and I encouraged them that um, that's one of the choice location for, for you guys if you actually want to make it to Canada. And another thing is because New Brunswick is welcoming to a lot of people irrespective of your age. Yeah. For some people that are struggling to make it to uh, a lot of other provinces due to their age, New Brunswick um, as um, immigration friendly program that accommodates people that even as close to 40, yeah. older than 40, and no other province can attract this type of um, age category. But I'm glad today um, a lot of people moved down there from Nigeria and they are doing extremely well. Absolutely. And that's one question that comes to mind. I mean, I think about it that if if most of these immigrants coming into Canada are um, doing well, they have great jobs in their countries, uh, they have uh, good businesses, they have um, property, they, they have their lives all planted in that country and they, they seem to be doing so well. Why are they looking at the option of immigration? Why has immigration become a top thing amongst this um, set of immigrants? Do you have any idea on that? When, when you say doing well, let's bring it into context now. Yeah. You can be doing well and you don't have peace of mind. Hmm. So Canada is unique because when you come into Canada, you have what is called peace of mind. Right. You, you can embark on anything that you want to do 
and their results because of the fact that you have inner peace with you that can make you to achieve your your goal so you can have back in your home country you can have good job you can have property you can have a lot you can have a lot of things but yet you still have to provide for basic things of life basic amenities of life you still have to provide that for yourself but here behind in, in, in canada you are not providing all those things yourself because you pay your tax and your tax help you to take care of those basic needs and the government is responsive as well and they ensure that um all um immigrants temporary president or um, temporary president visitor to canada everybody have fair share of good things of life right so that's why i say goodness is in quotes <laughs> so today you have peace of mind when you are in canada and that's why a lot of people are looking at it to come to canada yeah. or to settle their family because canada is one of the top secured country in the world and what else are you looking for when you have peace you have everything absolutely i hear you so much on that peace of mind is one huge thing that um i mean i i, I have come to learn that here in canada your mental health is is uh, important. It's it's uh, quite necessary. You, it doesn't matter how much money or how much how much wealth you have obtained, but without that um, uh, security, without having that um, right state of you know a great standard of living, it it all doesn't um, matter eventually. Um, and talking about that, I mean, most of these immigrants, newcomers coming into Canada today have to spend a lot it's it's uh it takes so much what is the immigration process like because we're talking about property people with an amount substantial amount of wealth what is the process like and i do understand that there are different streams of immigration i am uh, i did come in as a permanent resident and i do have an understanding of how much it costs i know quite a number of people who are coming in right now as students and um are having to pay up their entire student fees just to come here to study. Uh, what is the immigration process like and what are the different streams? What is the costs? Okay. Uh, when you talk about the immigration streams to Canada, we have a lot. We have um, the temporary residence option and we have the permanent residency option. So for the temporary residence option, we have um, just coming to visit Canada as a tourist. That's one. Then another one is coming to Canada as a student. That's another option. Then the third option is coming to Canada as a worker or as an investor. So that those three well, those three categories happens to be temporary in nature. Hmm. So aside um, visiting Canada, study and work, coming to Canada as a worker can transition you to become a permanent residency. Or oh, I'm going to be honest with you, when you come in as a temporary resident, you need a lot of financials. Mm. It, it's, it's capital intensive. Yep. And because of that, the ready option that one could look at is the permanent residency option which is not as expensive as when you come in as a temporary resident. Right. Because, for, for example, let's put into context. If you are coming to Canada uh, with your family, let's say family of three, uh -huh. it is not as expensive if you are coming in as a student. So if you are coming as a student with a family of three, you need to have at least almost four times or five times the proof of funds oh. that you will have used to settle in Canada as a permanent residence for family of three. That's right. So um, basically the options is there. And for you to come to Canada, you must meet the criteria. Every program has their criteria and you must fulfill the requirement of the program. So, so, so basically that's all about, that's general overview of Canadian immigration. Right. 
I saw on your website that you have worked with a couple of uh, nationalities. So you have worked with newcomers who are now in the country um, from different countries. I, I did see that Nigerians, you've worked with quite a number of Nigerians. I've seen that you've worked with a number of Asians as well. Do you mind sharing on those different countries that you've worked with? And what are those top countries that are looking into immigrating into Canada today? Okay. I've worked with, um, oh my God, <laughs> I've worked with lots of uh, people across lots of continents. Yeah. Um, um, I have Australia, I've, I'm working currently with some Australian clients. Um, I've worked with um, some Asia countries like um, Philippines, oh. Indians, and uh, Bahrain. So I've worked with them. Then also I've worked with some clients as the United Arab Emirates. So I'm going back to Africa. I've worked majorly with Nigeria. And also currently I'm working with some Kenya clients. And also I have um, Ghana also on our radar. So it simply means we are we, actually expanding at KSA. And to, to be honest, um, all these different um, clients of ours, they have their uniqueness. They, 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 they all bring something different to the table all the time. Mm. So, but um, I can say that in terms of processing documents, uh, without having so much stress, my Australian clients, uh, they are one of the top best. Then followed by Kenya. Uh, uh, it's shocking to me that Kenyans, when you ask them for documents, they furnish you with your document without stress. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and I hope um, also uh, Nigeria can also come up with um, good documentations as well, because one of the limitations Nigeria is having as a country is because of documentation when it comes to migrating to Canada. Right. And I'm going to be honest, um, they have to ensure that their documents is well tidy enough, is very verifiable on time, and this will make things to go fast with them. So those are some of my experiences with different um, uh, clients across four major continents. So, and I'm, I'm equally enjoying working with um, every one of them. So, but most of our clientele are from Nigeria. Uh, we do hope that we can bring all other people as well, not just Nigeria coming to Canada. Yeah. And we want much more people to step to New Brunswick as well. Right. The, the, some of the top countries that are hiring to come to Canada, of course, top on the radar is India, oh. followed by um, Philippines. Then I think Nigeria is also there. Then China is also there. So I can say top four country as it stands now, India, China, Nigeria, Philippines. So when you're talking about temporary residence program, you have a lot of Chinese going for that. Hmm. When you talk about permanent residency program, you have a lot of Nigeria and Indian going for that. Okay. Then when you now talk about um, work related, you have a lot of Philippines coming in for that. So, and all other countries um, follow in that order as well. That's interesting. That's actually some very interesting data that you just provided there. And um, you did mention a couple of things that I'm going to pick on. You mentioned the uniqueness of each of these nationalities. Um, what type of value do they bring? I mean, for example, you gave, uh, you spoke about those coming in from China and taking coming in through the temporary resident program is there a reason why and what kind of value do they all bring in well, for example um chinese of course they spend a lot 
and they have the funds to spend in Canada when it comes to study in Canada. So what they are bringing is funds. And that is actually helping Canadian economy. For, for instance, you can talk about Vancouver now, which is predominantly dominated by the Chinese. Right. So they, they've actually brought lots of funds into the country, and that has helped our, our country economically. Right. So, for example, Nigeria, we have, Nigeria is a robust country, and the people there are go-getter. So, Nigeria is like changing the dynamics in Canada as we speak now. For example, let's bring New, uh, New Brunswick into contest. Yeah. Um, I think I had couples of few people that came into the province. They came in as um, self-employed people. Yes. And currently, they are making great numbers there in terms of creating jobs. Absolutely. For, for example, I have a particular client of mine, currently in New Brunswick now. He has hired 11 Canadians wow. in the span of three years. Wow. Not, not Canadians working for him. So that is the uniqueness Nigeria is bringing to Canada. Mm -hmm. Nigerians are not just coming to seek for employment they are creators of jobs as well absolutely so because of that all across the province new bro coast to coast to coast nigeria is making impact they are making impact okay for example i'm also a living testimony as well <laughs> i'm a nigerian i came into canada i set up my job now i set up my company rather and i've engaged three people working with me i'm creating job as well so a lot of Nigerians going to BC, I have a lot of friends that are also creating jobs as well. So it means we are affecting Canada economically in a positive light. Right. The Indians are bringing tech into Canada. So, and that's also it's also revolutionizing the situation of things in Canada, creating jobs, the Indians are creating jobs, and that is what we're looking for. The Philippines are also helping at the front of caring for people. Right. Child caring activity, so they are there. Housekeeping activity, they are there. So everybody is bringing value to, to Canada. And as a result of that, the economy is growing stronger. And for your information, Canada is ranked number one in the world now in terms of productivity, mm -hmm long life and a lot of many other things so we are currently ranked number one ahead of japan japan has been the one dominating um, um the first country in terms of economic productivity but canada is number one as we speak now that's amazing that's some amazing information yeah. we're definitely going to look into that wow care say you have um provided some very uh enlightening information there uh that's awesome and that's the kind of information that we want to put out there that's the kind of stories it's the kind of stories we want to amplify the type of journeys that we want to amplify of newcomers here in in new brunswick and in canada as a whole indeed uh we do have that understanding i mean there is word out there that newcomers are improving uh, bringing in some sort of economic development here into New Brunswick and into Canada as a whole. It's interesting to hear that as well. You uh, interacting with, with immigrants like that and having some of that information and bringing some of this data here to the journey amplified. I have just one last question for you because based on some of the questions that we have heard and some of the uh, surveys that we have taken is that Canadians will wish to have more immigrants who will integrate into the culture, who will integrate into the system and not uh, come in, you know, in, in as much as they embrace diversity and multiculturalism. They also want to ensure that immigrants and newcomers are embracing their own culture. Do you as an immigration consultant have any impact or any input into that oh definitely called as a consultant is to also help 
our clients in terms of settlements. So, so, so for example, at KSA Immigration, uh, before you arrive in Canada, we try to walk you through the um, the cultural aspect of um, Canadian lives and values. So we want to ensure that by the time you come into Canada, um, definitely you're going to experience some cultural changes and shock. Then we'll have make you to be immune to all those things. And what we also encourage our clients as they are coming in is also um, ways of engaging Canadians on the type of um, networking you need to go into, people you need to talk to, so all those kind of things. So typically, uh, we engage in settlements plan before the arrival of our clients, and we generally educate them that um, Canadians are welcoming, and we also need to respect their space. And with that, um, things have been going on pretty well with um, new immigrants as they come into Canada. And also, the government also have a support system as well. Um, they have immigrant um, organizations, new immigrant organizations that also fast track integration of immigrants into the society. So we all have our part to play as stakeholders. So we are trying our best, um, educating our clients, and also talking to stakeholders on how best we can make things um, do good for new immigrants arriving in Canada. Absolutely. That's amazing. That's amazing. And it's really, really interesting and commendable that you do have that impute in ensuring that new Canadians, uh, newcomers, new immigrants do have that settlement uh, platform. KSA, I have to say thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining us today on the Journey Amplified. It's been a pleasure speaking with you and have you provide all that information to us. Well, till we come your way again, thanks, KSA. Thank you, and have a um, blessed day. And you too. Thank you. Yeah.